introduction. Hello, my dear students. And I want to talk to you briefly about the lab, debrief you, and discuss your lab report that you need to prepare. Um, we will work on this and answer a lot of these questions together. I have linked to this assignment a copy of our laboratory here. Well, I'll try to make it work. And just keep focusing on me, please. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lab protocol, eating nails for breakfast. And if you extrapolate little pieces of iron into making nails, I guess that's where that came from. And we did the experiment using total cereal, extracted clearly iron filings, sometimes quite significant. And now we need to complete our lab by acting like scientists and reporting on our results. But a large part of also reporting on your results is telling people what materials you used, explaining and reporting on what procedures and methods you used. So we're gonna take a little time to write out the answers in our lab report. I have downloaded this um, as a PDF. It's labeled, you know, eating nails for breakfast, student assignment, fillable. And I've put text fields into these, um, you know, into this PDF where your responses are requested. Also a place for your name. And so when you do this, you'll be going through and you'll be typing. I'm gonna go through and talk about it. And you know, this is almost pre-lab. Come on in so you can see me. The big question we're answering with this experiment, there are lots of big questions. This experiment in a different class might have a different big question. You know, in a nutrition class or a human physiology class, the big question might be, what is the role of iron in the body? We're studying mixtures. And the cereal is a mixture of all its ingredients. We looked at them before. They are whole wheat, sugar, corn syrup, salt, and that's basically it, with vitamins and minerals added. Very tiny amounts, but they're only required by the body in tiny amounts, and they end up being significant um, proportions of the minimum recommended daily allowance. I can think of some other big questions like, you know, we're studying mixtures. How is the iron mixed in with the cereal? And what form is the iron in the cereal found in? Is it the same form other iron-rich foods have? How is food fortified with iron? That's a good big question. How is food fortified with iron? And it asks for a hypothesis. By now, you should be good at um, forming a hypothesis. Remember, I like to say an if-then statement. If something happens or is done, then something else will happen or be observed. And how about this for hypothesis? We're doing this after the fact, but if there is metallic or elemental iron in the cereal, then it should be attracted to a magnet because iron is a magnetic metal, okay? It can either be magnetized or it is attracted to magnets. So if there's metallic or elemental iron in the cereal, 
then it should be attracted to the magnet. So let's go on and talk some more about what we observed. What materials do you need to conduct this experiment? Well, think about all we needed. We needed cereal. We needed, if we were doing this a bit more precisely, we would need a balance or something to measure the cereal out. If we were measuring a volume, we might measure out a cup of cereal. Not a very scientific measurement, but you know, we might say 250 milliliters by volume of cereal, or we might say 100 grams of cereal. But we measured out some cereal. We didn't measure it accurately, but, and then we needed a mortar and a pestle to grind it. Although we certainly could have crushed it up and made it more homogeneous and smaller in a variety of ways. We needed water and something to measure out our water. In this case, I used a graduated cylinder. We needed a beaker and if we were using and conducting this by making our slurries, you know, in the beaker, we needed a magnetic stir bar. Otherwise, we needed, and that box is in the back, it's not important, we need a box of baggies or freezer storage bags. And of course, we need magnets. Um, if you want to go further, we need stir plates. We could look at it under the microscope. Um, we could use a laboratory light. Uh, all kinds of uh, additional equipment could be used to, I don't know, improve the situation or make it more sophisticated. But that's most of the materials we needed. Really, if you wanted to do this at home, what would you need? Some cereal, some water, a baggie, and a magnet. And your own two eyes. So right out of step-by-step -step procedure for this experiment, I pretty well trust that you could go up here or in the other um, linked document and go up here and see the procedure. It was quite simple. Here's a list of everything you needed. Open the box and pour some out. Pour in some water. Mix and let it sit for an hour. I had a crush in there. Place a magnet next to the bag. Swish the bag around for a little bit. Flip the bag over so the magnet's on top and see what's collected below the magnet. Um, I made it simple. You know, when I was doing this part, if I can get back to page nine, at the bottom of the page, it's only the second page in your work, I would say like one, measure out some cereal, two, grind up some cereal, three, add water and make a slurry, you know, make a new mixture, a mixture of the cereal with water, expose the cereal to a magnet. Either drop a Teflon coated stir bar into the slurry or use a magnet on the other side of a baggie to attract the iron and finally observe. So, what were the results of our experiment? Well, some of you have never seen this before and it's um, pretty dramatic. There are iron filings in your cereal if you eat an iron fortified cereal. You would have thought it might have been something, you know, more what you might consider food grade, some nice white powder or something looking more like little teeny tiny one a day multivitamins with irons or little tiny Flintstones, but there were actual pieces of metal in the cereal. Those were our observed. And what did you observe as you conducted your experiment? I have to say I borrowed this lab report and I'm not sure what they're asking for here. Obviously, as the cereal was mixed with water, we observed it turn to a slushy, um, mushy, 
mixture. We have a good scientific term for that. It's called a slurry. And we also saw the magnetic stir bar or the magnet attract iron to it. And the longer we left it there, the more iron we attracted. Brings up the question of, did we get all the iron out? So what conclusions can you make after completing the experiment? We've already discussed this, of course. You know, some people never realize this, but we discovered that our breakfast cereal has metal filings in it. That's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, that brings up all kinds of questions. What new questions do you have? Where did it come from? How did it get there? Where did they get that iron from? Did they sweep it up off the shop floor? You know, is it safe? Are those metal filings safe to eat? Why don't they use some other kind of iron? Is it the same iron you find in spinach or other iron-rich foods? Like oysters or meat? Is it the same iron? What, is your, what happens to that iron after it enters your body? Is it good for you? Is it healthy? All kinds of questions arise when you see that. So let's just quickly answer some simple questions that are not exactly appropriate to a high school and a college depending on which group I'm talking to, chemistry class, but still relevant and potential test questions. So what's a metal? Um, we, I'll give you some other definitions of a metal, but a metal is B, a substance such as gold, tin, copper, etc. 70% of all the elements in the periodic table are metals. It has a more or less shiny appearance, good conductors of heat and electricity, can be melted, and is usually capable of being shaped. It's either ductile, that means it can be drawn into wire, or it's malleable, which means it can be pounded and formed into flattened sheets. Okay, if something's fortified, in generic terms, it means to make stronger, or to make more strong. Uh, iron, there's your definition, a heavy magnetic silver white metallic element. You hardly ever see it silver white though because it frequently rusts, combines with oxygen in the atmosphere and turns reddish. Um, it occurs in meteorites and rocks, but also many iron ores, wherever you see red earth, you'll find iron. And nutrition is a process by which an animal or plant takes in and uses um, nutrients and food. Let me finish our dis lab discussion. Let's see if I can clear things out. It's not happening. So, um. It says um, vocabulary comprehension. So read the following definitions. Okay. Think about what each word means, iron and fortified, and explain what it could mean. That is a typo, not what is could mean, but what it could mean when a food like total cereal is said to be iron fortified. You know? So. What it means is that when you see iron fortified on a cereal box or a food or on total cereal, it means the manufacturer added metallic iron to it. Now, this is a critical thinking question. That's what it means. But lots of nutritionists don't believe that metallic iron is particularly usable by the body. I'm a chemist. I believe when it hits the pH 2 of your stomach, it's going to turn to iron ions and be available to your body. But there's some debate about that and if it really is a nutritious standard. So 
Um, let me um, think about this. More critical thinking. Think about what you've learned so far about iron and iron in foods. Do you think there's a difference between metallic iron, like we found in our cereal, and iron found in things like daily vitamins and foods, iron-rich foods like spinach? And why do you think this? You should explain your thinking by saying, I think this because, you know, I do not think this is the same kind of iron and spinach. We could get some spinach and do this experiment over and look for some, you know? Uh, that's the way I would test it. I don't think this is the same iron you would find in spinach, but I'm not sure until I test it. And so I would grind up some spinach and do the same experiment over. You could also try this experiment with other iron-rich foods. It's just grinding up spinach leaves green plant pigments and dyes all over that are hard to clean up. And if we were to look for this form of iron in steak, and I grind up a bunch of hamburger, it makes a mess. And it introduces new problems, including safety problems in the lab that go beyond grinding up a nice and already dry cereal. So we won't be doing that experiment. So that is a brief discussion of our experiment. What we would normally sit together and discuss as a class. Uh, this is an unusual year. These are unusual times, but I hope the ones that were here face to face enjoyed doing this experiment and I hope the rest of you get an opportunity to see this in action or maybe even some of you have the facilities to do it at home. Anyway, next we'll look at separating a mixture of dyes in ink and continue our study of mixtures and continue our explorations in the lab. So I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.